Welcome back to this Critical Role documentary series where we dive into the history of Critical Role and explore how they became a multi-million dollar company. Last episode, we discussed the formation of their home game and how they all met and started playing together as a group. So, if you missed that, make sure to go check it out. Today, we will be discussing the beginnings of Critical Role as a company and stream D&D show. I will be discussing up until the end of their first campaign, including all major events that happened with the group and the show. I will not be going into too much detail about the actual story of their campaign, I will instead be focused on external events that happened as a result of their campaign. There may be a potential for a completely different series talking about the story of the campaign itself, if there is enough interest for it, but that is something that others have done as well, and not what I'm trying to focus on for this series. However, I may be mentioning some events that do happen in the campaign here and there casually, so this is your spoiler warning now. I also want to thank everyone for their support again. I wanted to do this project a little ambitiously, and I appreciate that the community has backed me up. I do also have a Patreon, and if you would like to help support the channel and help me devote more time to the series and projects like this one, you can head to my Patreon to do that. And I'd like to give a personal thank you to my first four patrons, Carl Perron, Aaron, Erica Guinness, and Abimanyu Shondell. Thank you so much for your support. Okay, and with that, let's jump into it. Chapter 2 of Beyond the Table. Critical Role had agreed at the start to six recorded sessions of their game on Geek and Sundry's Twitch stream, and would reevaluate afterwards to assess if it was worth continuing. And on March 12th, 2015, they had their first stream. And it was, well, it was kind of rough. So, uh, just to give you a little heads up, we are playing the fifth edition of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, we recently... It was full of technical issues, low quality sound, and a small studio setup. But despite these flaws with their first stream, there was still something about it. Something electrifying. I, I fly away. <laughs> <laughs> these nerdy voice actors had spirit, talent, and enthusiasm. Matthew led them with such creativity, and they all engaged immediately in the game. Even though they had many issues that they had to figure out when it came to streaming, the show was an instant hit. We were also able to see the group's true character very early on as they established that they would be raising donations for the charity A26LA. Also half of our donations will go to charity for the 826 charity version. Which helps children with after school education specifically in the creativity and art department. Within the first 15 minutes of their episode they voiced their support for the charity, which they would support for the years to come. The group had also created a short intro video to familiarize the audience with the characters they would be playing. In this video that Matthew had put together, each player had a voiceover describing who their character was, with fan art done by Kit Bush and other various artists accompanying their introductions. Unfortunately, because some of the art was used in the video without permission, coupled with the fact that the Twitch border covered some of the artist's credits, the intro was later blurred when uploaded to YouTube to avoid copyright infringement. Despite this, the group still made an impact, receiving hundreds of comments throughout their livestream. People were amazed at the skill and joy this group had when it came to their D&D game, and very quickly it was clear that this show was here to stay. The group began working on some fundamentals immediately, including establishing the company of Critical Role officially. Critical Role Productions LLC was incorporated on May 6, 2015, allowing the group to own and keep the intellectual property for their game and company, while still streaming and advertising through Geek & Sundry. As far as production goes, on April 16th we got our first look at their new intro, which also introduced their infamous logo, created and designed by Talis and Jaffe. The intro was created and edited by Zach Eubank, Geek & Sundry's Twitch producer. Its mixing and sound effects were done by Alex Neat, and their iconic theme song was made by Jason Charles Miller, a successful musician and fellow voice actor. The following week, on April 23rd, the group released their first item of apparel. It was a shirt that listed all of the characters' names along with Matthew's and Laura's character's pet bear, Trinket. This shirt was designed by a fan of the show, at Ruzgafti, and sent to the cast. They loved it and decided to launch it as official merch. They did a test run during this session and put 100 shirts up for sale. These shirts were sold within minutes before they were even done talking about them, and the cast reaction is priceless. They're sold out? This <laughs> we didn't even finish telling you people! It was made very clear at this point that there was a great interest for merch, and the cast began working to make it happen. They re-released these shirts two weeks later in grey, with a thousand in stock, and they were sold out within a week. Now, 
Critical Role has released hundreds of merch items over the years, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each release, but this first merch release was such a big deal that it is important to mention when talking about the state and growth of the show. However, when applicable, I will mention other merch releases that are pertinent to the story. It is also important to note that the group launched their website at this time as well, which featured a cast list, episode links, and a merchandise store. Critical Role's fanbase became extremely devoted and supportive to the cast and crew. Besides selling out their merch multiple times, they were also a huge help to the start of the show. Fans would send in food to the cast, pay for equipment, create amazing fan art, and send personalized gifts to the cast. The group of fans officially got their title of Critters at the end of the cast Q&A on May 14th. This was from a combination of Liam suggesting the name to the group and the fans also wanting to dub themselves as such. So you guys have officially dubbed that. yourselves Critters, You're critters and by critters. yourselves I mean, we mean by Liam. <laughs> from this point on, they were always referred to as Critters. Another key player in the success of Critical Role was Felicia Day. Felicia had confidence that this group was going to be successful from the beginning and did everything in her power to make sure it happened. Even after she no longer owned Geek and Sundry, she worked to make sure Critical Role succeeded. And so I was like, well, I want to watch this. Everybody needs to watch it. And I was like, just put all the resources behind this, this team. Critical Role's popularity continued to increase. On May 28th, they ran a one-shot due to several cast members being absent where they gave some tips and tricks about running a D&D game. On June 25th, they released their second t-shirt with art from Matt Abernathy of each player's character on it. On July 9th, the group, excluding Sam, spoke on a panel at San Diego's Comic-Con. It is at this event that we also hear a fan question asked by a fan and friend of the show, Danny Carr, who eventually goes on to be a part of the crew of the show. Our friend Danny, who's a critter. Hi, Danny! Oh, oh man, hi! From July to August, Critical Role had four episodes in a row where they had guest stars come on the show, including Will Wheaton, Felicia Day, Will Friedle, and Mary Elizabeth McGlenn. All of these guest stars were successful professionals in their own right and had connections to Geek and & Sundry and the group, which was just adding to the excitement and energy to the show, displaying the attention it was getting from other influences as well. In July, the group also released this shirt to celebrate hashtag 5K and a bear, in which a fan promised that if the channel got 5,000 subscriptions, they would send Laura a giant bear in honor of Trinket, her character's pet bear. Suffice to say, the goal was met and a promise was kept. Things were looking up for Critical Role, and their momentum seemed unstoppable. The show was fun and enjoyable, guest stars were making appearances, and fans were satisfied. Until October of 2015, when, within the group, there began to be some tension with one of their players, Orion. Over the course of several episodes, he had begun to get on the nerves of many of the cast members in a handful of ways. He would take away from the other group members' epic moments. I can't tell Kinesis to swoop it up! And he would spend a lot of time alone, shopping or running errands, excluding the rest of the group and forcing them to just sit and wait. How about you get nothing else and we move on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, last thing uh, that I do? No, that, no last thing. Orion would consistently fall into examples of metagaming and cheating to enhance the capabilities of his character, and he would challenge Matthew on what was considered canon in the story, trying to force relationships with NPCs that Matt had created. Seriously, Matthew? Come on! What? <laughs> it even got to the point where he would make inappropriate comments and crude jokes that made everyone at the table uncomfortable. Yes, because you said it out loud. So. Anyway. Now, whether Orion's actions were intentional or not, it became an issue regardless. For the sake of brevity, and because this can be a very long and complicated topic in Critical Role's history, Orion and the cast mutually decided to split ways and an announcement officially came out from Geek and & Sundry and Orion on October 28, 2015. The announcement detailed the split, citing the fact that Orion had stated that he wanted to pursue other projects, as well as having more time to deal with his medical issues. If you are interested in learning more about this situation, there was a great video done by Super Geek Mike, which I will link below because there was a lot that went into this decision. However, Orion maintained the rights to his character, Tiberius, and went on to make content around that character. But, from this point on, he is no longer affiliated with Critical Role. From here on out, you can see the tension dissolve, and the group goes back to its upbeat and silly style. And just two episodes after this incident leads into a Halloween episode, where everyone dressed up as characters and played the game. That steak <laughs> was well done. Uh, yeah! <laughs> that was so CSI Miami. 
It was fun, it was comfortable, and it was a breath of fresh air after the friction that had been present for the previous several weeks, if not months before. During this Halloween episode, they announced a product sponsor, the first of many on the show, Wormwood Gaming, who made the whole cast custom dice trays to use. Having this product sponsor just demonstrates the rate that the show was growing, but this wasn't their only big accomplishment. October also featured their first celebrity D&D game, where Matthew ran a one-shot with Vin Diesel as a promotional piece for his upcoming movie, The Last Witch Hunter. Laura and Travis also accompanied Matt, playing their Vox Machina characters in the one-shot as well. With the combination of sponsors, guest stars, and celebrity appearances, it was clear Critical Role was spreading. By the end of the year, they were averaging thousands of viewers each week. The show had started to set up a regular program at this point, with an intro from Matt that went along the lines of... Hello everyone, and welcome to tonight's episode of Critical Role, where a bunch of us nerdy-ass voice actors sit around and play Dungeons and & Dragons. And, starting from episode 23, Matt began using their staple sign-off... Is it Thursday yet? ...which was originally coined by the earlier mentioned Danny Carr eventually becoming a classic phrase in the community. And the person who, if you didn't know, originated the term, is it Thursday yet? And so many other phrases and jokes developed by the group, like Travis's, I would love to rage! Liam's, daka, daka, daka. and Matthew's, how do you want to do this? For the people at home, we live to hear Matt say, how do you want to do this? And as 2015 came to a close, the group put out their first official comic series, Critical Role Winter's Crest Festival comic. This was a six-set comic series written by Marisha and Tallison with art from Wendy Sullivan Green, telling some pre-streaming stories of the group. The group also started doing Christmas in November and December, where they would open hundreds of gifts given to them by fans. The group was blown away with the gifts they received and their fans' love and support. And with this energy and excitement, we enter 2016. The year starts off with the release of The Story of Vox Machina, a short narrated video telling the origin of Vox Machina with art done by Wendy Sullivan Green. It was a great way to give true context to the characters from before we met them in the campaign. And the momentum doesn't stop, so I'm going to try to get through this at a reasonable pace. In February, the group had a panel and Q&A at Wizard World Gaming in Portland, following the next week with a special Q&A and their first Battle Royale stream since many of the party members were sick. Then in April, the group had a special sponsored Pathfinder one-shot. And following that was their 50th episode celebration, where they released their new intro sequence, where they all dressed as their characters with an extended and remastered version of their original theme song. This new intro had a pretty large production team compared to the first, to which the group credited at the start of this episode. At this point in time, Critical Role had gone from a small time stream idea to a fully fledged show. When tuning into their episodes, you could expect a hilarious and creative ad segment from Sam. Well, that's not as good. <laughs> an update on any merchandise they were selling from Laura, plus charity and content announcements all within the first few minutes before they jumped right back into the story where they left off. It was non-stop entertainment, even with the announcements. For the next several months, it seemed the group always had something going on, but some of their larger events was their second Q&A in Battle Royale in May, and a Deadland RPG one-shot in June during Geek & Sundry's 24-hour stream for the MDA charity, with the group even selling a charity-specific shirt. The group also had a Lovecraftian horror one-shot, where for the first time Liam DM'd for the members of Critical Role in June, called Liam's Quest. And welcome to tonight's episode of Critical Role! <laughs> And Critical Role had an E3 interview with GameSpot. In July, the party returned to the San Diego Comic-Con as part of the Camp Carnival 2016 event that Nerdist and Geek of Sundry put on, hosting both a dating game and a Q&A panel. They also did an interview with Loot Crate at this Comic-Con, which was a longtime sponsor of the show as well. Interviews on different shows became more and more common for this group as people became more and more curious about what made this group so viral. Aside from the interviews and conventions, Something else big happened in July of 2016. Critical Role had their first live audience game in Indianapolis, Indiana, where critters could come and watch their game live in a theater, which was also streamed to the rest of the world. Lady Vexelia, Baroness of the Third House of Whitestone and Grandmistress of the Great Hunt. It was a great demonstration of the growth of the community, as a full theater of fans came to watch this group of nerdy voice actors play Dungeons and & Dragons. And the group followed this up shortly in August with their second live show, also performed in Indianapolis, Indiana. Oh boy. 
Following these events, the group had some time to recuperate, and the next big event was another one shot with Liam DMing for the group in September. I'm Obi the Rat. <laughs> you know why they call me that? Because <laughs> I hate haiku. <laughs> The rest of the year was calmer, aside from their one major accomplishment, the start of their second show, Tox Machina, hosted by Brian W. Foster. Now, I have to interject here for a second. I understand that there is recent allegations and a lot happening right now in the critical community when it comes to Brian. However, I am not here to comment on that. I am focused on the history and reflection of the events that got the company where they are today. With that being said, my heart and prayers go out to those involved in the recent situation, and I hope for a safe and positive outcome for everyone. So, with that, Tox Machina. Critical Role's second ever official show was where members of the cast gathered together to talk about their recent game sessions and do a Q&A, giving fans opportunities to reach out to the group and possibly get a response. It was like a companion piece to the actual campaign, airing weekly on Tuesdays. This show received a lot of positive feedback, since it allowed the fans to show off their artwork, cosplay, win prizes, and get answers to their questions. Tox Machina was a clear success and became a staple to Critical Role's programming for years to come. I can say that that legitimately was probably a miscommunication, <laughs> and I thought that was the intent. And, uh... <laughs> and this brings us to the end of 2016, a year full of growth, conventions, talk shows, set improvements, sponsorships, and even a Stream Award nomination. So much was accomplished that after the group had officially completed 79 episodes of the show, they took a month off to enjoy their holidays and got ready to start back up in 2017. And we'll see the new year. Is, is, it, is, it, not, is it 2017 yet? Yeah. <laughs> we are now approaching the end of Critical Role's first campaign, and as a company, not much more happened, especially at the beginning of the year. But big things were in the works for the end of the year. But before we get to that, one addition at the start of the year that has made a defining impact on some of their content was the official addition of Danny Carr to the crew. She moved to LA in January of 2017 and shortly after got in contact with Marisha and Tallison, who received her resume after hearing some of her skills and offered her a job as production coordinator at Geek and Sundry. Danny had been involved with the group on and off from the beginning, winning a giveaway in episode 7 and having her questions presented at panels, and coining the phrase, is it Thursday yet? So, it was great to finally add her to the team, and she became a producer of their talk show, Tox Machina, with Brian. Smaller events still happened throughout the year, even if it was comparatively calmer to the year previous. On April 1st of 2017, the group had a live Tox Machina show at WonderCon. Liam, once again, DMs for the group on April 20th to conclude the story he had been building. The group had a level 17 battle royale on May 25th with their current characters, Another live Tox Machina was held at the San Diego Comic Con in July, and a one-shot DM'd for the first time ever by Sam occurred in August. However, it was at this time that Critical Role started making some big moves, and we got to see finally what the cast had been working on throughout the year. In August, Critical Role had their last live show of their first campaign in Indianapolis once again, at Gen Con 2017, for their 109th episode of the show. I thought maybe we could prank Scanlan together. Another huge announcement was the release of their first comic book series with Dark Horse Comics, Critical Role Vox Machina Origins. Series 1 was released in 6 issues, with their first issue coming out in September of 2017, finishing in April of the following year. The last major announcement was that the group was releasing their first D&D campaign guide, Critical Role Tal'Dorei Campaign Setting, written by Matthew with help from James Hayek. These were huge accomplishments for the group, as they started to create official content for the critters to read through and enjoy, allowing them to dive deeper into the characters and world that Critical Role had developed so beautifully. October 12th, 2017. Episode 115, the final episode of Critical Role's first campaign. Five years in the making, between a home game, a Twitch stream, Pathfinder, D&D 4th and 5th edition, all to create one complete story. There were interviews done of the cast members in reflection of the campaign, there were moments and memories shared throughout the day, and there were tears. Many tears. 
This episode brought an end to the group Vox Machina, as thousands of people watched this chapter close. It was somber, it was emotional, and it was beautiful. Love you guys. Love you. Love you. Love. Love, 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 love. Have a wonderful night. Rest well. And... It's a Thursday, Ed. <laughs> the rest of the year was very relaxed. There were several one-shots during this time, including a two-part Lord of the Rings one-shot sponsored by Warner Brothers Games for their new game Shadow of War. Matthew also got to take a break from running the game, and the group took turns running one-shots. The group did a two-part vampire one-shot, DM'd for the first time by Taliesin, a one-shot ran by Travis for the first time, Rusha's bear-themed one-shot, another one-shot from Sam with a fairy tale theme, a kobold one-shot headed by the return of Matthew in the DM chair, and finally, a max-level battle royale between Grog, Keyleth, Percy, Scanlan, and Vax. And with that, we make it to the end of the year. The cast released an art book filled with fan art in November of 2017, called The Chronicles of Exandria Volume 1, The Tale of Vox Machina, published by Hunter's Books. And in December, they had their last Vox Machina episode on Campaign 1. It was a full campaign wrap-up, where the group got to ask each other questions and learn more about topics they were always curious about. We got to hear great stories and reflect on the journey of Vox Machina with the cast. Cows. Cows. Oh, cows. And even some of the guest stars that appeared throughout the campaign. This was a very heartwarming and personal way to end this chapter. I'm so proud and so happy to have been part of this with you guys. And we get to make a new one soon. <laughs> but you know what they say, when one door closes, another one opens. But that is the discussion for another video. Thank you so much for making it through this chapter. I hope you enjoyed it, and please, if you have any corrections or additions for me, let me know. There's a lot of information to get through, and I'm bound to miss events somewhere. So I will take whatever information you give me, and touch it up, and when I have my final documentary released, I'll make sure all the facts are as correct as I can make them. For me personally, I had only played one game of D&D before watching this show, and I was still hooked, not even knowing much about what was actually going on. That's how great they interacted and told their story. But I fell for D&D mainly because of watching them play, and Campaign 1 will always hold a special place in my heart, and I will always be a little biased towards it since it was my first experience with the group. My next episode will discuss events during their second campaign, from 2018 to 2021. This next episode has a lot to cover, and a ton of stuff happened for Critical Role during these years, so bear with me as I work on it. I will try to get it out as soon as I can. You can also help support me through my Patreon, or you can just offer a one-time donation if you feel so inclined. And last but not least, I do have a Discord. If you would like to discuss anything with me or just be a part of a really small community that loves stories, D&D, and Critical Role. All the links will be in the description. Thank you again, and I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.